and hello welcome again another site visit today we're currently on one of our last projects uh, for the outdoors for the year uh, and this is a great opportunity great example to get a closer look uh, and provide true and realistic expectations of what to expect on exterior limestone uh, one of the things that I also want to discuss is being able to identify the differences uh, between limestone not all limestones are created equal not all limestones uh, will stain uh, equally and not all limestone has the same type of texture Ultimately, it's texture, absorbency, location that determines the type of stain, how deep the stain is, and how much it is we can remove from the structure safely. Uh, after we leave this site, I'll probably go to another site for a job that we're going to be doing next year. But it's a perfect example of what power washing incorrectly can do to your stone. So stay tuned for that one at the end of this. But right now, just to quickly go over this, we're in a residential uh, setting over here being exterior cast limestone. We have a combination of, of uh, uh, French limestone here, of, of cast limestone, uh, and they all just look a little different, though they kind of look the same. So, take a look. First, identifying we have different trims here uh, above the windows. We have pillars, we have ledges, we have these pillars here. On top of these pillars, you have them sitting in two different directions. You got one horizontal, one vertical. Now, standing at a distance, it does not look like it's that different. But when you get close to it and we examine it, you're going to notice that this is super smooth. I hope that that translates in the camera. Super smooth, but you can see all the little holes that are kind of in there, right? And then we come down to this one. This one here, you can see that it's textured. This right here appears to have the hand smooth, and you can see that the texture looks a little different than it does up here. Not sure if that translates on camera, but it is. So this texture here matches this texture here. This texture here does not. What does that do? That means that staining is going to develop on this in different manners. First, up here we have a candle. This, when it gets wet, it can begin to rust. Top of that, over here you have this green algae and green moss. That is the result of the leaves that are right above it. Whereas that pillar and that pillar, there is no tree above it so you get to the property next door. So that's why you're going to have some green in some area versus other areas. Another thing I can point out here is that we have steps, risers, all made from the same material, but you can see that structurally it's a little bit different. In addition to the different structure, I want you to notice what wear and tear does to insulation. So over here you have your different grout beams, you have your hip joints all across. Down over here, perfect example of pocket. So this right here happens normally. And what's beautiful about this is that you can see that there's different layers. So this can happen through regular uh, erosion and or salt. Salt creates all these little different pock marks. Now all of this can be repaired. The problem with repairing it is creating a consistent color. You'll always get some sort of variation which ultimately stands out when you look at things from afar. Other things that we have to take into consideration we are cleaning is the front door. If, if there's anything painted, if you had a stained door, if you have a painted door. And another challenge that we also have is how to get to the height that we want to get to. So rule of thumb is we don't go anything higher than about a two-story, 25 feet high. And then anything that we can clean above that has to be on the sound structure of the house. For example, if if right above me, if that happened to be a landing or a stair or a, a platform of some sort, we could stand on that and then clean higher. But as far as ladders go, we go to a safe height. As you can see here, and then standing on that safe platform, we reach and extend to the height that we can most comfortably go to. 
general rule of thumb, about right over here to here is about the max height that we can go to. Other challenges that we face that when we are doing service in the city is always trying to be conscious of the neighbors. We never want to disturb their property, ruin anything, get water on them, or put any of the any of dirt transfer onto their property. So when it comes to working in houses in two cities, the sides are always questionable and it's always the two neighbors that need to discuss so as one not to upset the other for the overspray that we can create doing the service that we're doing. Another challenge that we deal with is plants. As you can see, in order for us to properly go ahead and clean all the limestone, we do have to work around plant life. And when it comes to plant life thus far, we haven't done anything with our processes, cleaning solutions, techniques, or anything to have to serve them in a way that's, you know, other than necessary for having to walk in here or trample on here uh, in order to complete the project. And then above all, what does a before and after really end up looking like? And the truth is that all the stains are not going to come away. If you look at just what limestone is in general, it's a sponge. It drinks. Uh, if you think of how limestone is created, it's a sedimentary rock that, that, that's created over time and as time goes on. And if you were to just take a straight, pure limestone rock, just, just pure, unaltered, untouched, nothing. A pure limestone and run water over it you'll see it go straight through so it's always the products that are used to bond them together and create them into a cast because that's what these are cast stones so basically they cast them to create the shape that you see there so when those cast stones are all built and merged together is when you get that strength and that bond now that strength and that bond may or may not be uh, 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 easily stained it really all depends on how it was constructed, what they used, and quite frankly, that's all a level of understanding how it's built and made that's really above our pay grade. But we're cleaners and we've been exposed to different materials, different types of materials, and the way that we've been able to identify them is visually, what color, are they smooth, do they have some veining in it, some lining in it, is it textured, is it rough, is it in the city, is it new, is it old? So in our world, we're able to easily identify the different types of materials and how to clean them, but there's really a lot more to it um, and ultimately they all stain. I'm going to capitalize by having by standing on this block walking by some of the homes so you can see what the before and after looks like you can see the different colors uh, and then you can you can then uh, put it next to the final result that we're getting. We do have a final result up there at that top trim and you can see it's not all completely gone but also it's not black either. Not sure if you could see this one house all the way over here but if you can see that one two over there at that top eyebrow over the window ledge you can see that it's dark that it's actually black and then if you come over here actually i'll capitalize on that where it is dark and it is black you could see the shape that it's in well if you come over here you could see the shape that was but not the dark and that is about the length and extent of the type of cleaning that could be guaranteed Obviously, the complete removal of any kind of indication of the stain is the objective, but it's not always the case, and it's always important to know when to stop before trying to remove a stain actually turns into a nightmare. We're gonna go to another site and show you what that looks like. So here we are at the nightmare uh, staining that I was talking about. This is another site uh, and this is a site that we got called on because they're looking for some kind of way to rectify what went wrong and what went wrong 
was in the direction that was used to do the cleaning. So first and foremost, I always say, what are we cleaning and what are we cleaning it off of? Right now, what you have here is you have a limestone wall. On this limestone wall, you had a wonderful artist uh, come and leave his name. Uh, and what I'm using this as is an example of a stain. So whether the stain is aerosol, in this case, uh, moss, uh, uh, atmospheric uh, pollutants in the air, um, leaves leaving that green transfer, um, or just those black streaks that you have coming down your home on the front or your building on your commercial building. Um, a stain is a stain and a stain is defined by something that can penetrate into something that's absorbent. Here you go. So we'll go over what happened and I'm gonna pull back little by little so you can see the overall picture and how this whole thing goes into play and what we hope to do to help rectify it, uh, but then kind of share the pros and cons for those treatments that we may or may not use. All right. So right here you have somebody that performed their artist. Somebody then came and tried to go ahead and clean this in a power washing fashion. How can you tell? You see right here, you have the width of a power washing gun. Another thing you can notice is that there's slight texture that was created, right? So power washing needs to stop at a particular level before this happens. And as you can see, this area was um, tagged on before, and you could see that a lot of it was able to come off. But the problem is that in the power washing process, there's only so much that can be removed. So whether that's green algae, whether that's something from, you know, from a leaves or from a, or rust, um, from something metallic that transferred and created, or in this case, aerosol, a stain acts like a stain and can only be removed in one, two, or three different ways. And I'm gonna pull back and you're gonna see the different variations that was used on this wall. So number one, stain appeared number two somebody tried to come in and clean it and used power washing through the power washing they left those little slight indentations and i say slight because i'm going to show you something later on as you can see here if you look at it closely you could barely see any kind of change but if you pull back it is pretty clear as day how wide that was now we pull back okay so if all else fails, cleaning didn't do it, power washing didn't do it, power washing at too high of a PSI created that, the next usual alternative is acid. General rule of thumb, when you're cleaning limestone, usually acid is your friend. If applied correctly and applied all the way across evenly. The problem with that is that you cannot control it. And that's why we don't do it. If you take a look over here, do you see how all of this is all bleached out and whited out? You could see it going all the way across over here. You could see the variation of the color all the way across. So all of this is a stain, power wash, and bleach. Now I'm gonna show you what power washing too hard looks like. So as we walk along the side of the building, you could see that a lot of it was removed. But there are indentations. The best indentation of them all is over here at the very end, is over here at the very end. And what you see here, it is a very, very deep gouge. Over here you can see how wide the tool was that was used. You could see the direction that was used in order to remove it. You could see that this was a B and that the person that used to remove this was following this path to try to get it all off. So if you were to look at this and you were to say, did the person remove the stain? Yeah, about 80, 90%. But in the process of removing the stain, you can see that they also completely changed the texture of the stone itself and what ended up happening was what was once an aerosol tag is now an embedded uh, tag that was basically scribed into the stone. So now, how do you rectify this? There is no cleaning around that's going to be able to rectify that whatsoever. So we came up with a different idea and a different plan that we're going to be using next year. So next year, 
we'll see if we're gonna end up doing this uh, it's a uh, it's one of those scenarios where we want to do a test see what exactly it looks like because we want to have true results um, the only solution that we were able to come up with that can potentially satisfy the customer however can potentially pose other problems primarily starting with the height we have to have a place that we just stop at so that everything is even and if you look over here this is the solution that we were able to come up with and that is basically you see where all this is all textured well this texture the only way to fill it or the only way to make it smooth is to actually fill it once you fill it you end up creating I'm not sure if we could see it yes kind of right here so this was a previous sample that we did before we ended up going on to this one but as you could see here you could see that the tag is still in this area but it's a little bit more feathered out because we first filled it then we went ahead and stained it this was a one coat of stain and as you could see if we were able to pull back you could see that that one coat is not going to suffice because you're still going to be able to see the tag all the way through. Now imagine putting one coat there over this entire thing and you could still see this tag through that one coat. So that showed us that we needed to do at least two applications. Now, if we revisit the original inquiry, the original inquiry was a person tagged the area and you wanted to remove the stain cleaning didn't do it power washing didn't do it power washing actually ruined it even more acid came over here and acid etched and completely changed the color from one area to the other and then now this is the other solution that's left us so looking at the pros and the cons of this this is something that is easily cleanable right here i'm going to try to mark it with this yes it did and then i'll come over here with my hand and go ahead and remove it let's see i don't have anything really wet with me but you can see that that begins to go ahead and rub off. So one of the positive features is that it's easily able to clean away and wash away, but things still can be permanent. The other negative thing about this actual scenario is that it almost looks painted. Now, if we were to cover this entire wall of this one color and just focus from here on down, it probably wouldn't look so bad. But then if you have this stark contrast up to here, then it's going to look much, much different. So I go through all of this just to say cleaning a stain isn't as easy as just cleaning it, power washing it, and with what? You really need to be careful on how you're doing it, what you're using with, what the PSI is, what the level of heat is, what solutions you're using, what solutions you should use or not use, and if you end up using a solution that you shouldn't use, is there a way that you can go ahead and use it without ruining the way that it ends up looking? So, I hope that this video was informative, lets you see a lot of the ins and outs and how a lot of it really relates uh, and kind of transfers from residential, home, atmospheric uh, pollutants to aerosol to moss to they all really react the same way and hopefully this just give you more insight into the limitations of the solutions that's around in the event that something like that does happen and is permanent. Um, sealers help prevent or sealers help slow uh, the spread of the staining but in no which way shape or form does it prevent it from happening and just to capitalize on the opportunity of this area you can see that we have different materials here and you could see the way that it's stained you can see how it comes off of the ledge drips down and how it continues up here if we go to the very very top of the crown of the building up over there you could see that right there so that's one type of material but here's another kind of material same pattern we go over here to this fire station over here you can see it's another type of limestone material you can see the same pattern all in all the best limestone that i have yet to see longevity is your old school indiana limestone which stands the test of time all right so thank you for joining me on another episode we were at two locations today similar materials different types of staining, different scenarios. There's a lot more to it that's involved. 
So understanding the material, understanding what you're removing from the material, understand how you're gonna remove it, with what equipment, at what pressure, at what heat, and what location, and identifying the areas around that can or cannot prevent something from happening or not happening, or who you could disturb in the middle of doing everything, neighbors, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, with that said, thank you again. I do hope that this video was informative and as more projects go on and more opportunities for us to share a little bit more insight, give you a little tips of, uh, tips of the trade, uh, more than happy to go ahead and do so. So please feel free, subscribe, like, share, uh, and contact us if we can be of service. Thank you.